Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I think there are enough of us to, to start the meeting. Uh, my name is Lucio. Um, I am the facilitator for this first cohort of the JavaScript for Data Science book. Uh, because there are only a couple of us, maybe we can start by introducing each other and perhaps mention uh, what do we expect to gain from this particular book. So I, I will start. So my name is Lucio. Uh, I study pure mathematics in Latin America. Uh, I want to learn this book because I, I only know a little bit of JavaScript already, but mainly on the front end side, and I want to delve more into the server side. Uh, actually, there are also two facilitators for this cohort. So maybe Shell, the other facilitator, can introduce herself now. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Shell. I'm based in Nairobi, uh, Kenya, and I'm very happy to be helping Lucio. Facilitated um, matters JavaScript how to print Hello World. So I'm better than I was um, before. Uh, I've been developing Shelly apps in the recent past, and I feel like with JavaScript, we can really make, uh, or rather, we can make our apps uh, powerful. Plus, it's not a bad, the good thing with JavaScript is that uh, even without R, you can always, you can always use it on, on um, front end stuff. So, yeah, happy to be here. I think I'm going to pass this over to someone else. So I, I pass the virtual mic to Peter. Once you're done, pass the virtual mic to someone else. So Peter. Oops, he's gone. Oh, there he is. You're on mute. You're on mute. I joined it. I guess it's an introduction. On each one on the on the phone. Okay, so I am Peter Young now. I'm with the Ghana Services at the data science. Uh, I joined the, the data science team. Like we've lost you. We've lost you. We can't hear you, but we can see you, and you're not on mute. Okay, as you search your mic, maybe let's hear from someone else. Uh, Arthur? Hi, um, I'm uh, Arthur Shaw. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I've, I've been dabbling with, I guess, web technologies for, uh, maybe just starting to dabble with web technologies for over the past year or two, um, working working on, on, on Shiny apps, among other things. And uh, I've started to figure out HTML. I've started to figure out CSS, uh, but JavaScript remains a, a mystery to me. I know what it ought, uh, what it is, what it does, but I don't know how to use it. And so I'm hoping through this book I can learn a little bit more about JavaScript. Thanks. Is it me? Can someone hear Sorry. me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you fine. Uh, Sorry, let me maybe do some introductions. If people, if you can hear me, okay. Shell. So yes. I'm Lor I'm Lauren Smith. I'm with the Ghana Statistical Service. Uh, as the lead data scientist, setting up a data science unit at the Ghana Statistical Service, um, and via me, a uh, Josephine, Dora, Peter, and Simon, who are on this call, have also joined the data science unit recently. Um, oh. We've been working a lot. We've been working a lot on R, but they have joined through a link I share with them. Um, yeah. So, for me, uh, I've been working a lot as a data scientist. Maybe eighty percent in R, 19% in Python and 1% in JavaScript, uh, and just hoping to 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 upgrade uh, a bit of J JavaScript knowledge through joining this book club. Uh, uh, and and why the why my colleagues might be struggling to join is that the, the internet at the office today is pretty dismal. Okay. Uh, so hopefully better in coming weeks, but uh, don't expect too much of it today, I'm afraid. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. And I hope yeah. everyone feels welcome. Um, Lucio is our presenter for the day. So please give a thumbs up if you can hear me, because I think if you can hear me, you can hear Lucio. 
uh, thumbs up or reaction. Okay, cool. Peter can hear me. Um, I know Lawrence can hear me. Asa can hear me. Dora, can you hear me? Justin, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I'll pass over the virtual mic now to Lucio, who is our presenter of the day. Uh, and he'll be taking us through, like just introducing the book club, the content, JavaScript, and uh, whatnot. So over to you, Lucio. Okay, thank you, Shell. Uh, the notes for the chapter are also available in this website. So I am sharing the link uh, with, it, with all of you now. So in, in this book club, actually this is also the first cohort for this specific book. And we will be covering this uh, book, JavaScript Data Science, or also called JavaScript versus Data Science. Uh, Let's go to the next section in this introduction. And um, perhaps this is your first cohort, sorry, your first book lab uh, of these R4 data science communities. So I will go over a little bit of the details. How do these meetings work? So each week we have a meeting uh, and one of us, any volunteer will have to present one of the chapters from the book. Uh, it's really not necessary that you master the material uh, that you're going to present, but the main idea is that you show basically a summary of, of, the, set, of the content and what you learned. And especially maybe we can discuss if there was, a, if there was some point that it wasn't quite, quite clear. So, and, and, we, and we can discuss it. Uh, usually the notes for, for this book, uh, they were not in a, a slide form, but now, there is like, um, but now it, it has changed. So it, it would be even better that the notes for the for the presentations are even shorter so that they actually do look like, uh, they, they do look like slides. Um, mainly the page, is, the page is going to be one chapter per week, but sometimes the chapters are more longer, sorry, longer than usual. So we can split it. it it's really not, a problem. And also the, there, there's going to be breaks in holidays or I think next and um, next next week there's going to be a break due to daylight time savings, something like that. And this part, how to present, uh, I will cover it in the in the last in the last section of this meeting. Um, but it's mainly due to how do we work with this uh, type of book. In this case, this book is created via the Bookdown R package. And also I will explain a little bit how can we modify this book, but now the online version of this book so that each presenter can update the slides or the content of the book. And in that way, uh, it's like a, commu a community effort for these summaries of the, of the actual book that we are working with. So I will explain this uh, a little bit later. Uh, for now, I will present a, a summary of this part. I also added a little bit of content and updated some things because uh, this seems to have been written. Uh, well, it says January 2020, but some of the commands have been updated, for example, for Node and NPM. So I made some changes. So. Okay, again, welcome everyone. This is the first chapter of the JavaScript for Data Science book. In this introduction, our main objectives are to download Node.js and NPM. Uh, these are going to be our tools for working with JavaScript, for executing JavaScript code, and for, or, and for handling the, the libraries of JavaScript. So things like installing, uninstalling, or updating some of them. And this part really is optional, but uh, I will try to encourage you to use Visual Studio Code uh, when we are working with with um, with a type of code of this book, and that will be mainly HTML. Uh, so that that is to to create the structure of your page. Uh, we will also work with CSS, that is the code to style your page, and um, the main topic, <coughs> JavaScript, and that will be to 
implement some interactivity to the page in the front end side, in the front end side, but then we'll also explore uh, JavaScript using using it as a backend. So despite the fact that you can use those languages with RStudio, uh, such IDE that is RStudio is not really greatly suited as a tool for web development. So I, I will try to convince you why you should install, install Visual Studio Code to work with these kind of technologies. Uh, and I will show you a demo to try to convince you even further. So these are, these are the kind of topics that we will be covering in the whole book. As we can see, it's mainly in modern features of JavaScript. Uh, also, what are these things called callbacks and promises? Uh, objects is something that we are familiar with. Also, classes, for example, in a Python context. Over here, we'll, we will also be learning about the basics, uh, web development technologies in the front end side, at least. Uh, and, and by front end, I mean what the user, what the user is seeing in his screen when he using when he or she is using the browser. So, for example. What I am seeing right now, that is this, this book. Uh, and this part is interesting that this is like an intermediate step once you learn these technologies, because this React library, uh, it allows us a more structured way to create websites and update the content that, it, it, that it's being shown to the user. Uh, we'll also be working a little bit on the backend side applications of JavaScript. Uh, well, this chapter, I think it's maybe a little bit updated about data visualization because we will be covering Vega or Vega Lite. And perhaps it would be better to work with the plot library from the observable package. Uh, but really, it's not, it really doesn't matter. Uh, both of those tools are pretty good on their own. And the final project will be to combine all of these, all of these tools into something that it is called a three tier, three tier uh, web application. I don't get like a specific definition of it, but uh, I I linked uh, a description of what this means, this three tier concept. Uh, and also, perhaps importantly, so uh, JavaScript is not only used for the front end, but also for the back end. Um, at least in this book, we'll be covering an even mix of front end and back end. So who is this group directed to? Uh, really it's mainly for people who already have a, a basic knowledge of any programming language. So we all of, probably all of us manage, we already know tools like lists, loops, conditionals. Uh, this part about running commands in a command line interface, it will be important because uh, we will be installing sync with npm via the command line and also perhaps executing some JavaScript code via Node.js and also via a terminal looking uh, thing, a command line interface. Well, I, when I saw this condition, I, I, I saw that it was pretty trivial. Like I expected it to be uh, met for all of us, but uh, from what Lauren mentioned, perhaps it, it is a little bit of a problem, at least in this, during these meetings, due to the connection uh, what Lauren is working with, what working in. And then over, over here, of course, in the book, we get uh, brief descriptions of who are the authors, but I wanted to add over here, uh, perhaps a little more detail about, about who they are or perhaps what they have what they have done. Uh, in this case, for Maya Gans, one of the authors, uh, it turns out that she was uh, one of the people who made these kind of art book clubs happen uh, back in early 20. They even wrote uh, an article about her in, in her studio. Uh, also, she is a co-creator of the Mastering Chinese Solutions book. So I guess probably most of us are familiar with that book because many of us uh, got interested into JavaScript uh, after working with Shiny. Then for another of the authors, uh, Toby Hodge, uh, well, I, I didn't find 
many things in his in his website, but something something interesting was that he wrote this book. Well, he co-wrote this book called Introduction to to Regex, right? To regular regions. And, and I I gave it a quick look and, and I did like it. So maybe it's useful to some of you. And finally, the other author is Greg Wilson and He's also one of the main, uh, wait, sorry, there is a comment. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, thank you, Shell. Uh, besides that, he was also one of the main contributors of Tidy Blocks. This is a block-based tool for performing data analysis and visualization. And it was originally, originally created by, by one of the other authors, by Maya Gans. Uh, over here, I linked a demo that she performs. It's really like a, a Scratch, I mean, the, the MIT programming language, the Scratch interface. Uh, but yeah, it, it did, I mean, from the demo, it did look to have like a lot of potential, but uh, Greg Wilson mentions in this post that uh, the work for such project uh, has been discontinued. Uh, however, he also proposes a way to to deal with the with the problems that like that stop this project, and um, at least from what we are going to cover, I think it's feasible for any of us to to perform the solution that Greg is proposing in this blog post. Okay, so for setting up, uh, let's see. Because we will be working with uh, JavaScript, uh, and so it's not like where we can do the usual case of simply copying and pasting code from the book and running it into R. Uh, we will we will need another tool that will be Node, but we will we also have access to this well to the code in the chapters in this repository. They are also organized chapter by chapter, so. That's pretty useful. Uh, an important note is that the exercises, uh, they really are not optional because they include new information that will, that will be necessary later in the book. So even something as simple as these initial exercises may be obligatory. Now, uh, I will link this, this to you, perhaps if you have not already loaded node and npm and this is going to be our, our tool as i mentioned before for executing javascript code um, and managing the libraries for it so we simply click uh, sorry we select uh, our installer uh, well i already did, did it so I, I am not going to do it again really but this um when you download node via this via this installer uh, NPM is also get installed uh, via that execution. So really it's, it's like a double download. Now, I, I already have node set up. Uh, let me open some, well, let me open some command line. I will open PowerShell. So it's safe, right? Node allows us to execute JavaScript code. One way is via a REPL. So we execute this command into your command line. I, I write node, and now I have access to this REPL for Node.js. I can write um, some JavaScript code and it will get, it will get executed. Uh, for example, set some variable to one and then print such variable. We can also execute JavaScript files in a similar fashion that one can do with Python. Simply, you have your file, with some name and its extension is .js. Then to execute it, you simply uh, use this command in the well in the in the correct directory, so that this file is found in, in such path. Uh, and this part, uh, this is where I change a little bit of the commands mentioned in the book because th they're having updates in the npm tool. So first, what is NPM? Uh, well, it's the Node Package Manager. Uh, it's, it's going to be also a command line tool. 
and it will be useful for finding, installing, updating, and installing uh, libraries. It's also really useful when you have some project that you forked uh, from GitHub and you want to set it up in your local machine. So you do that via this tool similarly. It, it, it's not only a matter of JavaScript yeah, libraries, but to set up uh, projects on GitHub uh, into your own computer. So these are some of the basic commands. Perhaps you can also execute it as I do right now. Uh, let's see. To install a library locally that is only for the current project folder, then we execute this command. If you see in the book, they mentioned that you need to add this uh, save argument over here, install uh, slash slash. Well, I don't know the name for this character, like the minus character. I will call it minus, install minus minus save. Uh, but really, there was an update. Uh, I, I set the info over here uh, that such argument, the minus minus save, it's already by default. So we don't have to write it when we are installing some library. Then as an example, perhaps, uh, well, first, let me change the directory to, to anyone. Um, I will leave it over here. Now, no, 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 let me do it in my desktop because uh, there was a problem with when I tried it before. So I will go to my desktop. Okay, that is my current folder. And I will I execute what they mentioned, right? Locally install some library. Uh, I will install the uh, Canvas library. So we write uh, npm install, well, locally by default, uh, the Canvas library. And that is going to create into this folder, uh, three files, well, two files and one directory. One is a package.json, Another is going to be the package dash, no, the package minus log.json. And, and in the other one is going to be a folder named node modules that consists of these libraries that we have just installed. I'm going to go now to this directory, to my desktop. So it's over here. And so, sorry for the mess, but these are the ones that have changed after I, after I, after I executed this command, this installation. Uh, let me open this one, package.json, and it's going to, to contain the dependencies. That is, what are the libraries that have just been installed? In this case, it's simply Canvas and some specific version of it. We also obtain this package-log.json. Uh, this one, we don't really modify manually because uh, NPM, or, or I think that no, yes, NPM is going to modify it uh, automatically for us. And finally, this node models library. Uh, in this case, I, I don't know if it is really, really big because I have already installed other modules or perhaps we only install Canvas, but such module also imports another ones. So maybe all of these are the ones that get uh, imported by Canvas. But really, these are the libraries that have been installed once I, once we executed this comment. Okay, so there is a comment. Let me check it. Please. Ah, uh, yes, free also. Also, please feel free to interrupt me uh, at any time. I, I don't mind. Okay, so we close this and let's continue. We can also. Ah, and, and one last command, we can also check which are the libraries installed in this current folder. Sorry, the JavaScript libraries via executing npm list. And I only installed Canvas. So over here, I should only see Canvas. Well, only Canvas. Uh, and the other one, again, the authors, they say you can use minus minus global, but really it's the same if you replace minus minus global with minus G. So we can also globally install a library and that makes it so that all projects can use such a library. 
Uh, I, I'm not going to do it because really I have a question. Uh, okay, yes. I have a question. Um, is NPM to JavaScript what Conda is to other packages? You know, when you're installing packages, it, it's been long since I used Python, but when you do Conda install something or pip install something, is it the same thing here? No, I didn't NPM. get you. I didn't get the question. So I'm, I'm asking, uh, you see how we do conda install this package, that package, whatever in Python. Um, is it the same thing? Is it like, is conda, is NPM to JavaScript what conda is to other packages in Python? What do you use in Python? Ah, interesting question. Uh, I haven't really worked with conda, but... Okay. I would say that they probably aren't because as I mentioned close to the beginning, NPM is not really a tool, sorry, it's not just a tool for installing or uninstalling libraries. Sometimes, um, uh, I want to show you an example, maybe over here, right? There is some project that we want to run in, a, in our computer, something like this. So they, they should okay, right? We will look it up. It's GitHub repository. And some of the files over here. Let me open. Sorry? I want to show you something over here, package.json. Uh, over here. Perhaps a difference between NPM and Conda is that NPM, we can also use it to convert this application. It's just a, an infinite canvas for drawing but to convert this application into something that we can execute locally in our machine. And the usual case is that you fork, right, the repository for this application. You go to its package.json file, but you're not only limited to using npm install or uninstall commands, but you can also execute code that is already, like, it is already set up by the author, for example, to build this project, they have this script built. So in order to execute, sorry, in order to build uh, this project, that is to get all the dependencies so that we can execute this project in our local machine, you you look at the package.json file in the script section, and we see, right, what is the name for this script build? There is going to be some command associated to that script, but we will do something like npm, from build uh, once we are in the in the correct uh, directory right for this for this for application so after executing this then you would get all the after installing the dependencies sorry and executed this you would get like a local version of this application but now it also works in your machine so you have all the dependencies installed uh, and all of that and also there are other scripts that you can run depending on on different uh, instructions to do may, maybe to implement <clears throat> different features of, of this application this tldr project and again it's simply a matter of running the appropriate script so maybe something like npm run the serve a double dot w double w w w w Something like this. So it's more than an installing or uninstalling. So, so Lucio, I, I have um, another quick question on uh, on npm. Um, I, I think I know the answer, but let me confirm. Can can you can can one install a library locally without having it be installed globally and still have it work within the scope of that project? Uh, yes, for example, what we okay, just perfect. did, what we just did, uh, accomplish that because let's see, let me return to that specific folder, uh, and we saw right that we installed locally the the canvas library. So if I uh, execute this command to get which are the locally installed libraries for JavaScript, 
I only get this one, right? But if I now execute this command to get, which are the globally installed libraries, uh, uh, Canvas shouldn't be over there. So let's see. It's not over there, right? I got it. Okay. That confirms that confirms my 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 intuition. Okay, so in this part where I added a little bit to the setting up section of the book, uh, it's mainly due to what I mentioned to you about the use of another IDE. Now that we have to work with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files, and really RStudio does have support for this type of files. Uh, I say it's good. I have I, I just so I just learned this, for example that RStudio does recognize this type of files. I just learned this today. But as I was checking it out, it's good. But really, uh, the type of support that Visual Studio Code provides, it's better. It gives you, it gives you more information, uh, more features as well. So also another advantage of using Visual Studio Code, at least for this book, is that uh, in the case of the web development, let's say community space, in, in that community, then yes, also a more suitable IDE is precisely this one. So I will share the link with you now, perhaps if you, if you want to install it right now. Um, perhaps the main advantage that we would get from using VS Code, that is Visual Studio Code, instead of, instead of RStudio for this specific book, is going to be this extension called Quokka.js. I will also share the link to install it uh, once you have already installed VS Code. But I, I will show you now uh, uh, what this extension does. So let's say I let's say we want to execute some of the exercises of the book. Maybe maybe this one, right? Or, or some of the code for the book. Sorry, uh, they define the constant variable. They set its value, and then they simply like print. So that is the JavaScript version. Sorry, the JavaScript version is console log. And they ask, right, what is the type of uh, this number? And such type of, we get such value via this code. So the advantage of using Quokka, I, I am going to activate it now. I, I am using right now also Visual Studio Code. I have over here the code that I just showed you right now, this one. And the advantage is that once I activate Quokka, that is, I press Control Shift P and I execute the command. This one over here, toggle start stop concurrent file. Then we will get a live update on the on the printed values for our document. Like like we can like we can see over here, right? What is the value of this code? Exactly what it is being shown over here to the right, and also what it is being displayed in this part over here in the bottom section. So really we can be uh, working with more code. Uh, perhaps we create an array and as we execute some operations, uh, the output uh, would be also shown to us. Thanks, uh, well, shown to us live, thanks to this application, right? The output of this, well, well, sorry, that's not the start. Uh, let me fix this. Okay. We create an array. We add an element into it. So how does the array look now? It's the same, but with this added element. Can you show us how, ah, sorry, there is a question. It says, can you show us how to open a new script in Visual Studio Code? Also, how do you install Quokka in VS and then how to launch Quokka? Okay, yeah, I will show you all of that right now. So let's say we have already installed Visual Studio Code and we simply open it. And then over here, uh, there should, uh, well, maybe I should open it like completely raw so that I simulate your, your case. Uh, let me see. No, it's not opening. So maybe just just this file. I click in this upper left corner file, 
new file. Uh, let's see, I will call it live example, example.js, the presenter. Uh, now it's telling me where to save it. I will save it right now in the same folder. So save, sorry, create file. Now uh, it has been created. Uh, now for this file, Quokka is not yet activated. And uh, as I print some, some variable, and it, it is not being shown. So the second step that you ask me is, how do we install Quokka? That is via the link uh, that, that I send you, right? Uh, this link, well, did I send it to you? Ah, uh, yes. We click over here, install. Open Visual Studio Code. And now, well, over here in your case, it should be already install it, but I already have it, so really nothing happens for me. But now that you have it, and you also have this uh, JavaScript file, you go to such file as I am right now. My mouse is in such file. And we simply press Control Shift P, or we can click over here, Manage, and then, I'm oh, sorry, in the lower left corner, in this wheel thingy, we can click Manage, then Command Palette, or activate it with the command Control Shift P. And we simply write Quokka, and then toggle. And once we press Enter, then uh, really that will be it. I press Enter, and now uh, let it update. Oh, okay, so now the, the live printing of the console log value is over here to the right. I'm sorry, I've just posted a question. You've lost me. Um, after installing, then what? Please repeat that part. Uh, after installing, well, let's say we already installed VS Code. We already created a JavaScript file via this part, file, new file. Then we install Quokka via the link that I send you. Over here, we click install. Open in Visual Studio Code. Um, over here for you is going to say install, uh, not not these options that I have right now. So once it is once it is installed, perhaps you will have to close and open Visual Studio Code. Probably not really, but now in your JavaScript file, this one with extension .js, you simply wait over right here. Now you simply go to the lower lower left section of Visual Studio Code where there is this wheel. We click on it, then we go to the command palette. I click on it, and we simply write Quokka toggle, and we're going to press enter uh, via, sorry, with this command, this toggle start or stop on current file. So I press it, and now the, li the live update of the console log values is going to be displayed to the right. Okay, thank you. I have another question. So if we close this session, let's say uh, at the end of the day, and then when we come back tomorrow morning, do we have to um, do the same thing again? Uh, the only thing that you will have to do again is this part where you write Quokka and toggle. Uh, you, you don't have to install the extension again. It's already installed yeah, forever. Yeah. Yeah, that is what I was asking. Okay. It's not the way we have like in our library, library tidy verse and then uh, things will always work for as long as you have that line of code there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, well, and that's one part uh, about an extra setup. I, I hope that it will be useful to you. At least for me, it has been uh, while trying to work with, with the code of the book. Uh, and then there is a mention about contributing. And as you can see, even in this interaction section, there are, in, uh, there are useful parts to contribute. For example, as I mentioned, perhaps to update a syntax over here, uh, because this can be replaced with minus key and this part of minus minus save 
can also be uh, obviated. It's no longer necessary. So really, if you find mistakes in the in the book or something you want to include, or perhaps, perhaps even include new sections of chapter, uh, you can do that via uh, submitting a pull request into this repository for the book. Uh, and the last part, uh, I wanted to, to show you something. I, I find it very useful and that I have set up for our specific book lab. And it's the ability for the JavaScript chunks, that is, this type of, uh, let, let me close this, this type of codes. Uh, perhaps we are, we are accustomed to it uh, when working with R Markdown or Reporter. This is a chunk. In this case, it's, this is an R chunk. And now it is a JavaScript chunk. But what I have set up over here is that when you, in the book, right? This is the project for the book. This, this specific file is what is showing us uh, the material that we have just covered, the introduction chapter. And this part about exercises, that is precisely what I am showing you right now. So, and um, the important part is that if you define a JavaScript chunk, and the part about evolve folds, uh, it's not necessary, but now the output of these JavaScript codes, uh, it will be displayed also into the book. So it works like the regular chunk for R or Python, but now also for JavaScript. In this case, what would be the output? We're simply defining some string, and then, well, in this case, it will be, it will get printed. So the output would be the printed string, hello world. And as we see in the book, such is the output that we see, hello world. And also, if you want to modify uh, the code, the JavaScript code for this chunk, I have set it up so that you can, for example, to this string, uh, I don't know, uh, paste it some exc exclamation points. And then if you want to execute again the code in this chunk, you press Alt J. And as you can see, the output also gets updated. So really in this book, in any JavaScript chunk, you can run JavaScript as well. There are a couple of caveats, so you have to end your expressions with this semicolon, but uh, it's really mostly that. Okay. Uh, and really the last part, no, sorry, not, not yet, almost the last part, is about these exercises. I hope that your installation of Node um, and NPN has worked successfully because now that we open a, a command line, in this case, I am simply opening Windows PowerShell uh, and we execute, right, these commands to obtain the version of Node. Then what do I get? this because I just installed it. Well, I uninstalled it and then install it again today. And similarly for NPM, what is a version of NPM? Now, I don't know why it takes longer for NPM, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's just another version. So at least we should all be up to this point after, sorry, before covering the next chapter. Lucio, one, one quick question, if I may. Um, uh, so I know that N NPM, uh, you know, there's the NPM uh, command line interface that you're showing. There's also the NPM um, like package repository. Um, does one need an account with NPM, the repository, in order to use the, the command line interface? I assume not. Uh, I, I hadn't heard of the NPM package repository. Uh, let me look up what it is. Yeah, my crude understanding is it's kind of like what what CRAN is for R. Well, it's sort of like between CRAN and uh, and like GitHub somehow. So you post your uh, your node your node modules uh, node packages there, and I guess it's from there that they're fetched when you use the npm uh, install commands. Yes, you can also fetch them via GitHub, but the the syntax changes. So it's not only from the NPM package repository. There are also from GitHub, you can do it. 
Does that answer your question? No, 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 that perfectly answers my question. Thanks, thanks so much, Lucio. Okay. So uh, really, this was the last part, but as I mentioned before, uh, some members uh, told me before this meeting that they had a little bit about how to present because they weren't familiar with the, the book down library. So I will simply cover this part about how to present uh, this book that we are working in. Uh, that is, I think I, I shared the, the link in the beginning. Let me see. Uh, over here. Yes, over here. This book, this online book that we are all working with. And of course, the main idea is that when, once you present, that you update this online book. Really, you are not required to. If you want to use uh, another set of slides, perhaps even just PowerPoint, uh, if you want to do that for your presentation, it's fine. But it would be highly beneficial if every presenter uh, updated this online book. Yeah, and it's not just beneficial for us, uh, this current cohort, but also for possible future cohort members, because for, for future cohorts, the same book could get updated and improved by even more and more people. So I will simply describe, <coughs> sorry, I will simply describe how to, to update this online book uh, using the R Bogdan package and Git and GitHub. If you already know R, uh, you can follow these instructions that uh, John gave us. Uh, they, they are over here. You can set up Git and GitHub to work with RStudio and then use, uh, use this library to, per to perform many of the Git and GitHub actions that we need to, to update the online book. But if you don't want to follow that, uh, perhaps you are more familiar with Git and GitHub and don't want to use, uh, use the library, then really the main way would be, uh, well, first you install Git in your computer, you set up your GitHub account, and once you're logged in into your GitHub account, you fork, that is you create a local copy for the repository of this booklet. That is this one, this one over here the book lab JavaScript for data science. So you would do something like, wait, over here. Okay, click fork, and you, we get our own copy. I already have a copy, so really nothing is going to happen, but you will you will obtain a copy. In my case is, uh, let me access, yeah, no. over here. So you would get something like this, right? Your own copy of the, JavaScript for DS Book Lab repository. Now we want to set to set up this repository into our own machine. So we can click over here, code. In this part where it says HTTPS, we copy this part over here. We can click this to copy. And say I want my, my folder for this repository to be in my desktop uh, folder. So we simply go to such folder via the command line. So it would be something like, uh, to access my desktop, I will do something like, uh, this is the path. Okay, I am now in this folder. So now that we have this uh, link already copied, we simply execute git clone and we copy paste it. Once we do that, it's going to create a local copy now in our machine of these files. And in my case, I've already done that, so I will not do it again. I will not do it again, sorry. Uh, but such files are precisely what I am showing you over here. I am in this part, uh, sorry, in the folder, book lab, JS for data science, and these are the files that I have already uh, download it from, from GitHub. So in order to, to, per, to perform some modifications to the book and then to update the online version of the book, you start by setting up a branch. So you create, so you perform something like in the command line interface, in this case, I am in PowerShell, git checkout, create a new branch, and then the name for your branch 
I, I did something like add notes chapter two. I am now in a different branch. And over here, you simply perform the modifications to the code. In this case, this is the this is the file that defines the content for the second chapter of this book. So this is a file that you will have to modify. So I would write something like, uh, sorry, what is the, the title for this slide? I don't know, some, some, some title. I, 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 some. Uh, really, you just, uh, you notes, you, you write your notes over here. Once you have finished doing that, then you can run it at this command, then git commit this one over here, and maybe a message like added notes for chapter two. You present them. I will not do it right now. Uh, and once you have that, uh, you only have to push such changes to into the repository, to the fork repository that you have set up. So. In my case, it's something like simply executing git push. But are they for, for, from, from VS Code over here, you will get a, a button that says publish, publish branch. I guess from for every studio, you also get some button that says publish branch. So you just click on that. And over here, once you go back to your fork repository, in this part, there should be some text that says a uh, compare and pull request. You click on it and you confirm your changes and then you click again, perform pull request. And really that's it. <laughs> now that I have explained it all, I see the benefit of doing do it in all uh, from R. But I don't know, I'm used to doing it from Git. There's a question from Lawrence on the chat. Uh, no, really, there is no need to need the chapters because if we, are, we see over here, uh, what, what, sorry, which files are getting ignored, uh, all of the HTML files really get ignored. So the maintainer of this, of this book, uh, he will perform the, the rendering, the need process. But it's always good to knit locally just to make sure it works. Yeah. Yes. Um, and really, and uh, that's it. I, I am not. I don't have anything else to add. I hope that you do install Visual Studio Code and that uh, the extra things that I mentioned were useful to you. Are there any comments before closing the meeting? Yes, from me. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was a very good first um, meeting, even though very fast, <laughs> or maybe I'm very slow, I don't know. But thank you so much. Uh, there are some things we might go through again next time. I think, I don't know whether it's just happening to me, when you're switching between windows, to me it's very fast. So there's a point I got lost. But uh, I'm happy there's even a section on how to present because that was the questions I had, uh, how to add content to our slide, uh, how to add our like content to the book. Because um, I think for some of us who took part in this book clubs a long time ago, we, we were used to developing slides externally, but now this book, is, this is where we are going to be um, inserting our content. Anyway, yeah, so we are two minutes to the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. So just to mention, as you can see Lucio's screen, we have a um, Google sheet where we are supposed to each book uh, chapters we want to cover. Trust me, I had, um, I'll be taking you people through callbacks and I don't know what callbacks are yet. But I believe I will know by the time um, we are, we've reached 9th of uh, March. So please feel encouraged. Training is one way of understanding. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Training is one way of understanding um, different concepts. And I feel like 
we are here, no one knows JavaScript 100%. Some of us don't even know much or almost anything, but uh, we are going to do it. So I encourage you to just pick topics um, so that we don't end up with one person or two people or three people covering um, all the topics. Because here we are, we are here to learn from each other. Everyone is reading, which is something else I wanted to encourage people. Please read these chapters. Uh, before we meet so that even the questions, we can come, we can start meetings with preset questions based on our readings um, for the week. But yeah, so our next meeting is on 2nd March at the same time. For us, it's 6 p.m. GMT plus 3, um, 3 p.m. GMT, 9 a.m. America Chicago time. Our presenter will be Lucio, who will be taking us through basic features, which he's kind of started on lightly, but um, that will be the official uh, introduction to chapter two. Again, chapter one was just installation uh, and the different things. I think I will encourage people to, by the time we are meeting here next time, maybe have, if you don't have VS code installed, maybe have it installed install npm uh, install node so that at least as we go through the examples in class you can also go through them locally yeah i think um i think that's it the, our meetings are always recorded this is something we forgot to say they are, they'll always be recorded so if you don't want to show your face or name you can hide video switch off your video or maybe change your name to something else um yeah and that's it from me and i have to run so thank you everyone for showing up yeah thank you lucio lucio i had one quick question and, and if and if you need to run we'll, we can uh chat on slack but uh, you mentioned for in the rmd files when you can add the you should have to add the the javascript code block uh and mentioned that uh, you could kind of um when presenting in book down you could edit edit the javascript code and then kind of like update the code is there anything we need to do for that to happen or is that something that's just the way that uh, the, the book down works it wasn't clear to me if there are extra steps we needed to take to have that work or if that's already built either built into book down or built into what you put into this particular repository uh, yes, uh, thanks for the question. I, I should have specified, specified that. Uh, no, there is not anything else that you have to do. It's already built in into, into what I added to book then, right? R really, the only caveat is that when you uh, define, right, your expressions, so there's your lines of code for the JavaScript chunk, uh, make sure to separate them via semicolon or, or the output won't be rendered properly. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for that. Okay, I also thank you because I, I did that based on what you shared about JavaScript for Shiny, something like that. So I based, I based my code from something that you shared. Ah, okay. I just didn't know about the part where you could update. That's that's really cool. I guess it's just taking advantage of the fact that book down is HTML. Yeah, precisely that. Okay, well, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks so thank much, Lucio. Have a good week, weekend.